favorite viewer. How's it going? We good? Ready for a niche one? Well, it's happening. Yes, mate. If you'll allow me an indulgence episode to soothe my sizzled circuits after this full year of liquid garbage, I quite fancy a detour back to Ort 7 or so, and a good look at some of the bots that made me want to do this ridiculous robot video thing that I've pigeonholed my entire life into, back when modern Transformers were a shiny, appealing novelty to me, and not the only thing I do. When I was actively relishing checking out the many different styles that they present, which yes, did include the whole Michael Bay movie thing. It was 2007. And once I broke through my initial wave of that's not what I remember, knobhead nausea, we all had it. I did actually get quite into the bots, but not the obvious ones that you like, Normo. Not the ones that were in the film. Like some kind of casual. Because however cool and cutting edge the on-screen bots were, you can't squeeze an entire year's worth of toys out of five hero robots and a handful of visually bewildering, mostly grey baddies. They were crying out for some flavour, a little colour, a little spice. They needed to roid out the range with just some more ones. Some mediocre mook bots. And you know that's where your boy lives. So today we celebrate that certain stratum of shelf-warming space fillers that made the 07 movie line so much more more than meets the eye through the movie screen. You get it. Welcome to the Bayverse B-List Rando Rodeo! See me with them goons! Right, we're just jamming today, yeah? We're not gonna meticulously critique the entire product line. I'm just not chewed about which ones are from the regular main line, which ones are Sector 7 or Spark Power. Who has time? We're just gonna jump into these first few fools based on the banal fist fodder bots from the Transformers tie-in game, cunningly titled Transformers the Game, which was tasked with expanding on the plot of the movie in order to give the player some form of agency and or something to do, which it managed in the weakest and most predictable way possible through hours of upon hours of tedious eyeball-rattling punch-ups against countless hordes of the same handful of generic enemies. Jenner enemies. Jeremy's. Jeremy Renemies. So get a load of these lens-faced losers! Now, I guess because these lads were created with the express purpose of being relentlessly clattered to bits for an entire video game, you gotta imagine the designers didn't want to make them too sympathetic so you didn't accidentally feel anything while pummeling them in their droves. So to avoid imbuing even the vaguest sense of humanity, they simply gave them all a shared claptrap-ass face design that is not a face. I mean, you gotta love how utilitarian that is. It's just pure physical exposition. Like, this is a battle droid. A deceptive clone. It has no mind, no ideas or emotion to express that would require a face. This is not a guy. So why do I love them? Let's ask Swindle. Ugh, oh, mate, this was the only bot that was ever going to kick off this video. Movie Swindle is a firm, faceless favourite of mine and an icon of the mass-manufactured Minion Man. Because as basically the default no-name in-game baddie, he is the epitome of anonymity. The anonymity. The epitonymity. Very much the classical Transformer shape with a hood for a chest and, you know, the rest. But given a certain alien automaton spin, like his giant skinny single-toed hooves, weird weirdly angled shoulders and this pop-out see-through belly boner, and his whole head setup is so strange. Barely clear in the body block on this narrow flip-over slab with one facial feature and no neck. Like, they clearly went out of their way to make Swindle as non-personable as possible. And I'm still sitting here like, oh, friend. I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's good, simply that I like it. These things are frequently unrelated. <laughs> Transformation is, again, pretty normal, but all loaded up with all the springs and flaps that were so emblematic of this era. And the car mode is so ordinary. Just a completely unremarkable two-door coupe with a donk on it. And I love that. I'm quite aware that I end up bringing this up in like every second video, but it always bugged me how ostentatious the Autobots were with their two cool concept car disguises. I mean, look at Sideswipe. I'd be suspicious of that thing even if I didn't think it was an alien robot. Like, how is that hiding? And that's why Swindle works. Even with the douchey decals, this is still the most innocuous, overlookable car imaginable. Robots in disguise. Get it? Anyway, it bears mentioning that Swindle was pretty much the only bot in this entire selection that was given like a pre-existing top-tier Transformer name. But this isn't Swindle, is it? This isn't a case of, look what they did to Swindle. It's just a random ass off-the-shelf name they had kicking around that was available, right? You know, like Overhaul or Sky Blast or Payload. So this is Payload. So 
other leveled up shoulder barge melee mosh flavour of Deceptagoon, who I was always very apprehensive about buying, but I'd see it around in the local nerd shops and that and just love how it looked in the package. Because this alt mode is so heavily my jam. Just a hard ass dark blue Decepticon Roadhog. All harsh flat angles and pure blunt force trauma. But part of me knew it wouldn't be the one, because the robot mode just visibly sucks. Look at this, it's so weedy and wibbly and impactless and so far from what that vehicle mode suggests. It somehow doesn't incorporate any of that good armoured car energy. All that boxy bulk just evaporates. That angry ass cab becomes the bottom of his feet. Well I suppose it is kind of a miracle that it can transform so completely as to be unrecognisable. It just loses everything I liked about it. What Payload needed to be was a chunky mini boss brawler robot with all body mass and shielding and hefty shoulders. Stockade basically. I wanted it to be stockade. But it's actually just a frustratingly featureless shittier swindle made out of mostly flaps. The whole head and chest chunk is just a panel that comes off. And this body horror gut grabber gimmick is kind of neat, but do you know how much room you gotta give it? Stay in your lane. Bitch. But even after all that, I just cannot dislike him. I mean, the colours are good, the vehicle's great, and the toy hunt memories and good time associations are just so deep in there that he's always gonna be special to me. The lucky bastard. My little payload! Anyway, how you feel about an obligatory airborne Deceptor drone? Got you covered, there was a couple kicking around. With your main generic jet jerks being Dreadwind and his eventual recolor cousin Overcast. Locking down the Sky Guy vibe with a gloriously gawky and infinitely endearing full face presenting shield droid. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> What are you trying to pull? What is that? Ha <laughs> Christ. Oh, mate. What are you? Honestly, have a bit of a struggle expressing how much affection I have for this thing. He's all wrong. He's straight up the wrong shape. Incorrect. Arms too big, legs too little, too wide, too shallow. Kneecaps on the outside for some reason. But like actually solid robo detail. This cool ass color scheme in sleek black and lurid neon. Fierce flamethrower fingers. <clears throat> flame flingers, and a beguilingly bumbling Johnny Five aura that just hits me right. Ugh, like, it is dumb. It's so nakedly the dumbest thing ever, but I like it. That's what we're doing today. Transformation's a bit of a limb tangle, with basically all his bits barging past each other like a friggin' one bot mosh pit, but it does bag you this extremely tight jet mode. It's just stupidly slick and serving sincerity, with wicked wings and blistering boosters and a kind of corvid cockpit cone quarter. Bit of an odd undercarriage there, like he's hauling a pair of double A batteries. But like, don't these Bayverse bystanders just be dropping some of the deliciousest realistic vehicle modes? Or at least realism adjacent vehicle modes. So even if the robot mode doesn't land for you, you square, Overcast can still steal your whole heart and shoot off into the sky. <sighs> what a guy. Right then, one last player to cram into this particular gaming party, and a bit of an outlier at that, boasting a legit all-timer design, a long-standing legacy, and an actual face and everything. Yes, friends, stop your grinning and drop your lid in for Dropkick, who's probably about as good as we're gonna get today. Or ever. He's really good. <laughs> Look at this hefty hot bod, bringing bitchin' bigitude and peacock in posture. Arms have got built-in guns and shields. Feet are flaunted superfluous vanity tendons. Bodies packing deep core motor greedlies and external window boobs with a certain traditional truck bot groundedness, even amid the controlled chaos of his exploded vehicle kibble. And I mean, the head is a bit of a busy buffet of mouth plate and visor and antennas and flat caps, which we love, but babe, take one thing off, yeah? But I mean, this is a properly quality kiddo. No qualifiers, no excuses, none of my simpy apologist shtick. You know the one. Oh, they're a bit shitty, but I like them because I'm broken. Oh, I'm few. Dropkick doesn't need that. He's too pretty. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, transformation's absolute bliss. With a superbly subtle diagonal shoulder swing that deploys with an elegance so astonishing. I can't believe it's on like a retail deluxe. And the alt mode, you've got to stop. We get it, you're good. I mean, it is kind of striking how a pickup former feels like such a rare treat. Cause we only ever really get iron hide and the occasional cup. They're kind of a delicacy and you sort of don't realize that until you see a good one. And Dropkick is the good one. Just pure powerful perfection from the honking great grill to the deep roomy bed. Not to mention the absolute dream paint job. Oh, to wear a Decepticon logo so big it barely fits on your entire self. Not sure what went wrong with the weapon though. Just a plain plastic slab with like a one-to-one -one scale pair of pliers in it. The f is that? It is a bit of a curveball that the robot kicks so much ass and then he's just holding this piece of crap. But it's not like it's built in. At worst, it's a talking point. And it doesn't even touch how straight up stunning a Transformer this is. Awesome robot, banging truck, hilarious midpoint chicken leg fan mode. Dropkick Murphy over here is everything. And you know, it can't be a coincidence that the Bumblebee movie featured a blue Decepticon bruiser with a heavy duty motor mode called Dropkick. Come on, there has to be an influence, right? The colors? The vibe? The fact that there was also a red one? I mean, am I crazy here? Isn't that face the precise midpoint between bastard wife and violence husband? Am I right? Stop me if I'm tripping, but I think I'm right. Come on, I'm right. Ain't I always? All right, log off gamers, we're moving on. So alongside that cluster of fresh-faced, no-faced game faces, the expanded TF movie line also, for some reason, blotted out a whole heap of absurdly out-of-place Unicron trilogy repaints, mostly made up of obscure retro homages using just whatever molds were laying around the workshop from the last job. And like, it was such an obvious what do we got moment, because none of these figures gel with the movie world in any way, with their simplistic square boy designs and friendly faces. But you know me by now, I live for these dorks, don't I? They've even taken up space on the channel before. Like Dive Bomb, who's pretty much Cybertron Thundercracker in a Hawaiian shirt. Serving savage acid wash sunstorm stylings and sky blue light piping. Sky piping? Blight skyping? That's when somebody you hate video calls you. We got long time few fave crankcase. Red Alert, repainted in blanket blue with a bit of yellow. It still makes me smile that they thought to use this thing as a trigger con shout out. These flip out cannons are so finger snappingly fast. They look like a friggin' giant. Cut. I mean, for me, this is still the only halfway decent official modern crankcase. Screw that other guy, he doesn't count. I hate the dreads. Uh, there was Big Daddy, the magnified Micromaster Pimpmobile repainted from Downshift here. Can't believe they changed his name in Earthrise to Daddy-O. But is that really the best backup name they could do for Big Daddy? Could they not get the trademark on Large Father? And here's another one that I love for a dumb reason that I'd somehow never told you about until now. Say hello to the Transformer with my favorite name of all time. This is Grindcore. <laughs> Now, the reasons I like this thing are very few and very shallow. It's just the name. I just like that there's a Transformer called Grindcore. How am I not going to enjoy that? Come on. And you know I invented him a little headcanon team with his underground scene mates. D-Beat, Circle Pit, Gravity Blast, and Crust. They combine into power violence. We have fun here. But uh, not so much with the actual guy. It's not a bad figure. Just a reskinned Cybertron landmine, which is certainly a mold with some satisfying chunky chops. But I don't know. Just doesn't quite pop. Like these arm scoops are just a lot. The colors are a sort of watered down green and gray marrow fat murk. He transforms with pretty much a low impact tuck and roll. And I mean, the alt mode's kind of fun. Just a kind of indefinable digger machine that's either so huge it's got its own control room or so small it's got its own saddle. Sort of enjoy the fake out comedy crocodile eyes. But there's just this certain glaze of boredom to it. Same. And honestly, it's always bugged me a little bit that he's an Autobot. Because as a green digger thing, it's kind of fair to assume that they were going for like a Constructicon feel. But nope, turns out it's actually based on G2 Roadblock. Also a Decepticon. Look, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. It matters a little bit. I just don't know how we got here, man. It's a Transformer, a G2 callback no less, named Grindcore. And I don't love it. There's just no edge to little Digby Pearson here. There's nothing to grab onto. It's sort of like late 90s napalm death. It's all right. I'm having a nominally good time. It is the kind of thing that I'm into, I suppose. But you call this grindcore. This tedious, washed out, homogenous filler product. Grindcore, is it? Should have called it Ozfest. <laughs> 
Anyway, aside from that and full of homages, there was also a separate sub-branch of super serious military-tinged repaints that brought in a bunch more wild-ass space robots and whipped them into blockbuster wardrobe by simply making them as dreary as possible. Like, get a load of Air Raid here, who takes Energon Skyblast's adorable micro-jet fire vibe and stuffs it into a boring camouflage coverall. I mean, it is still kind of a fun figure, packing an impressive synchronized automorph head bod rotatathon and a gun that is a spear? But like, are you kidding me? This thing is not a badass. Air Raid has no business wearing this uniform. Friggin' Valor Thief. Same kind of deal with Armor Hide here. Simply a sickly sweet Cybertron Scout repainted in inappropriately hard ass black and yellow industrial active wear. I mean, it's a wonderful bot in its own right. Just a little square tubster with a neat cyber key chest flat missile array and an irresistibly adorable Micro Optimus truck mode. Micro Optimus? So, like, why try and make it hardcore? Are we really gonna sit here and pretend this isn't the sweetest thing that ever existed? Look at that face. Aww. And possibly the primo example of enforced transformer militarization, or deceptive conscript, has got to be Jetstorm, a dishearteningly dimmer switched shadow of the spectacular Cybertron Ultra Class Jetfire. <sighs> Real shit though, even with this diluted grey upon grey outfit, this thing still rips absolute ass. Just a fantastic fun time fatty with a magnificent humongous seeker body type, colossally clumpy reversible shoes, and a wing span wider than a thousand mums. I don't know, just the sheer physical presence and inflated fun factor of this thing already make it shine so bright that the flat ass colours kind of don't hurt it. He made it! Jetstorm survived the essence extraction process and he's making it your problem! <laughs> Transformation's unrepentantly uncomplicated. Same. With a rare sideways leg fold that I've only ever seen on one other bot, and it was overcast. Weird. And I gotta tell you, I'm positively enraptured by this Goliath cargo plane. Cargoliath? What a pure thumper of a thing, right? Like an oversized flying fist with a stupid huge Soviet style and a nose rounder and plumper than some dogs. Not sure if I love the fold over scorpion cannon. And I'm sure this button used to do something, but I simply cannot remember what. Something dumb, I bet. And look, I know I'm saying it a lot in this video, but I genuinely have so much love for this thing. Ultra Class Jetstorm, especially the plane mode, just has such a huge stake in why I continue to enjoy Transformers. It's just big and ugly and stupid and fun to be around. And I've got such formative toy life memories of seeing this thing out there dominating the shelves. Payload was there too, but this one turned out to be good. I mean, just the sight of that massive red box with the curved window and the cool branding stacked to the brim with giant aeroplane robot. Both this one and Wingblade? It was the stuff of dreams, man. Like, literally, I had numerous dreams about them. But like, in my dreams, there was a third one that turned into the shuttle from Avatar and it was called Extinction. And this was years before Transformers 4, but I guess post-Avatar, so... Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Never mind. God, I'm just trying to share something with you. You don't care about me. But anyway, I guess we should round off this movie-verse review verse by bringing it back to the actual movie? Because you can't make a film series as bloated as this without a whole supporting cast of things to blow up. And honey, what you blow up ain't always a robot. So they turned it into robots. Take, for example, Longarm, who's based on that one weirdly memorable tow truck from the final battle sequence when Bumblebee got his feet blown off. Jazz, do something. Jazz. 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 And with our hero Sam valiantly standing around having a flap, it was up to poor Michaela to seize the initiative, carjack a tow truck, hook up your injured Autobot mate, and reverse to victory in the giant alien war that Sam dragged her into. Girl, you are too good for that f boy. But man, the hits just keep on coming. Longarm is yet another absolute banger from the B-list. Yes, mate, this broad lord is all about the impact, with his serious shoulder span and enormous flappy hood feet, somehow leveraging all that negative space into an increased bulk illusion and feeling like a big deal in. Plus he's got that marvelously memorable head sculpt just flooded with luscious iron brew light piping. Don't know if I love the open hands, and it is slightly sus that his weapon's literally screwed on there. It's fine. It's whatever. Definitely something different about this one's 
Drone's vibe as well. Well, it doesn't come off super Robo Drone style or hyper combat focused, apart from the massive gun anyway. But I mean, as a design, this is more of a civilian worker bard who wears his blue collar on his sleeve. Like a cuff. Gotta love that dynamite diamond plate flooring theme. Even his giant cannon's got a hazard light on it. I feel like I should be wearing a high vis for this. <laughs> Transformation packs in a painful looking leg scrunch up front and a big arm stretch for the entire rest of it. No wonder he's called Long Arm. And the alt mode's a cheerfully chunky breakdown, bro. Packing an absurdly wide and low bull nose with a daft blue speed splash design. Sumptuously smooth tires and a cheeky tow hook for the rare bog off two for one doot de doo. And you know we love a cheeky Unicron Easter egg, but you gotta wonder why they changed it to Orson's towing on the toy instead of Mike's towing from the film. Who the hell's Mike? I don't know, man. This was kind of a massive Michaela moment in the movie. And honestly, I'm just glad there's a plastic pal as quality as this to represent it. Can't go wrong, arm. <laughs> Alright then, time, I think, to take stock of Stockade. A classy black SUV sucker based on the Sector 7 cars, I reckon. Or possibly the one where the steering column came to life and maimed that young woman. It's funny, isn't it? But either way, this is one sexy Escalade, with possibly the smallest Decepticon badge I've ever seen. It's between Stockade and Swindle, and it is close. Just a slick and shady bruise cruiser, all tinted windows and secret agent swagger. Cause look, if you're gonna get disappeared by a government agency of questionable legality, the least you deserve is a smooth, luxurious ride. Still deeply enamored by the suave simplicity of this transformation, you just kind of open him up like a cupboard. But I, I, don't, I, I just don't know about the robot mode anymore. Like, Stockade is pretty special to me, and I've gushed about him before, at length, while half cut. You saw it. But I just don't know if it's hitting the same as it used to. Like, I still think he's good. I dig how he operates. I love his heavy set hunkitude and dangly gorilla hands with bonus wrist extenders. That is some reach. He's such a reacher, Tom Cruise's option in the screenplay. But more and more, all I see is the imperfections. Like the awkward sticky outy windows. These flagrant kibbly car calves. Carves. And the fact that you can see his back from the front. But isn't that half the fun of these lads? They're scrappy. How am I gonna defend Overcast and not love Stockade? We're not about perfect here, okay? We enjoy a vibe and Stockade is serving it by the gallon with a gorgeous general purpose head design and a compellingly combative henchman energy. Henchergy? Hennessy? Hennessy? Deceptor Cognac? What are we doing? But look, there's no way I'm gonna finally make this video and pretend Stockade isn't brilliant. He's a good lad and he makes me happy, okay? I'm not out here trying to beef. When life gives you beef, make Stockade. You know, like fizzy gravy. <laughs> right then, time to get into some normalized everyday militarism with Landmine. Cause there was some buggies, right? Just in the film there, going. Here's one that's a robot. Now, even among such banal company, Landmine here is exceptionally average. He's like the best at being not the best. With a mightily mediocre design that sort of takes the classic Autobot style guide and dispassionately applies it to an army type stock character soldier boy. Just a standard car former bod, but make it buggy. I mean, I do kind of enjoy his straggly piecemeal aesthetic with like canisters for feet, articulated clampy claws, this shoulder mounted rifle, and a face which is pretty much just a boulder of all spark blue with like a baseball catcher's mask on it. Hang on, have we talked about all spark blue? That was a thing, right? Just this particular shade of bright blue plastic that kept showing up on all the figures for a while? Oh, that's it. Cluttered transformation there. Like, there's a lot of junk getting crammed into not a lot of room. The rear bumper never doesn't pop off. But I suppose the buggy mode's accurate, I guess. Like, it's kind of an unusual one, and I suppose pretty well put together for what it is. But it's just somehow too busy and not interesting enough. Because, I mean, it is a lot. There's like heaps of detail and the springy suspension and the gun and all bits and bobs and that. But it's somehow so joyless. It's just got no chutzpah, you know? Like, where's the wax? It's just blanket camo and grey and black and I'm really not sure how I feel about this tampo here. The US flag but black and white and reversed? I don't know, it seems sinister. It seems fash. It's probably fine, right? I'm sure it's fine. They're just saving ink. It's fine. 
I'm sure it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't look at it. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't look at it. Landmine, more like Blandmine. <laughs> but look, if we're going to address the Transformers film's ever-present macho military miasma, we can't not bring up those wicked-ass Osprey helicopters. They just wouldn't stop showing up. They were friggin' everywhere. They were, like, pivotal to the finales of movies three and five. They're the first thing you see in the entire franchise after the Allspark prologue. Our first glimpse of planet Earth is a friggin' Osprey. So of course they were going to release one, weren't they? Just, uh, might have forgotten to make it good. Me at this video. Put up them hands, or whatever you got, for Voyager Class Incinerator! Yes, indeed. Check out this chaotic copter bod. Now this thing is probably the most hateful robot mode I can think of. Pure, unfiltered aggression. With every iota of its ferocious frame dedicated to shredding shit up with his triple-bladed, non-optional non-hands. That is some shredding. Predication. I don't know, he just feels feral to me with his elongated armored forearms, these live but ragged legs, the vaguely vortexy colors, and that terrifying transparent eye visor like a luminous grumpy chevron. How are you gonna be so featureless and angry? Gotta say, that backpack's a bit of an unusual move for this line, right? Like, regardless of how weird they all are, they're all generally pretty clean, kibble wise, so it's just the wildest whiplash to see Incinerator rock up with two. Two thirds of an osprey sellotape to his back. And you know what it is, don't you? It's because of the gimmick. And again, a lot of these lads are sort of beholden to their silly spring loaded action gimmicks in some way, but it seems like Incinerator was designed entirely around his one, where you could tug on this rear mounted radar and that would somehow transfer through the entire figure in both modes and make his propellers spin like a mad bastard, which was a great idea. And it was amazing that it worked in any capacity, but it just wore out. It just stopped working. I mean, you can maybe scrape a bit of movement from the elbows and that, but come on. He gave up his hands for this, man. Incinerator was so bound by his duty that he practically gave up any chance at a normal life and it failed him. No wonder he joined the baddies. Incinerator sacrificed everything else for a gimmick that spins. Nobody wins. Transformation was always going to be a bit basic, wasn't it? We know most of it was already there. It's pretty much all feet. And I mean, it's not like they weren't going to slam dunk the only Osprey in all of Transformers, is it? Oh, wait, Obsidian. The only good Osprey in all Transformers, sorry. But even with the busted gimmick, this is just a pure delight, man. Just a wonderful, big-ish, kind of realistic toy of a cool-ass vehicle with, like, propeller posing and landing gear. What's the problem? Go and check it out. It's basically seamless. Crystal clean cockpit, sculpted implied rear bay door. Real shit, this is probably a top five all time Transformers helicopter. Ruddy helicopter. And I'm honestly delighted we're closing the Rando Rodeo with Incinerator. He's just the perfect button to pop on the end of it, right? Quite possibly the truest Bayverse B lister. A gorgeously realized super stern testosterone mobile that flails out into a flawed but well intentioned robot mode that advocates way too hard for its half considered gimmick and just ends up being kind of stupid. Huh, could have said that at the top of the show and saved you 20 minutes. And I think that's your lot. I don't know why I made this video. I just had to. It was just in there, you know, rattling around, making noise for 10 years. It was just time to shake it loose and make room for some new ideas. Hope I can still have those. Hope you liked it. Maybe we'll do it again someday. I know you'll love Skyhammer. So I might dip into some more of those subsequent sequel second fiddlers in another one in five years. Still be here, won't I? doing this, making essentially the same video over and over again with different robots until I get it right. I'll never get it right. You though? Crushing it. Laters, haters. <laughs>never expected to actually have made that video. Cheers to all the folks that donated some bots that made it onto this one. That's uh, Jim van der Kolk, Ed Peary, fella called Bob, and uh, our old mate Andy. Thank you, dude. Not forgetting a huge patron shout out to Adam Jones for supporting me on the show. I do not. I do not deserve it. So thank you. I appreciate you. All right, I'm going to go get drunk. See you in a bit. Be sure to subscribe for more Theo's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal. Keeping it real.